What's the true significance of competition? Is it the relentless drive that pushes manufacturers to innovate, evolve, and perfect their products? Or perhaps a stage where they assert dominance in a given field? In the world of military aviation, the KC-46 and A-330 MRTT once engaged in a fierce rivalry, leading these two tankers down different future paths. But what exactly happened, and who was the winner? Which aircraft redefined the standards in this segment? Let's dive in and find out. Since the late 1990s, the U.S. Air Force has faced a daunting task, replacing its aging fleet of KC-135 refueling aircraft. Initially, their choice fell on the aerial refueling version of the Boeing 767-200, which was preferred over the Airbus A330-based tanker. However, instead of purchasing the aircraft outright as per tradition, the Air Force planned to lease the tankers from Boeing. Things took a sudden turn in January 2006, when Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld announced the cancellation of the KC-767 contract. He asserted that this decision would not undermine the Air Force's ability to complete its mission, as the KC-135 Strato tanker and KC-10 extender fleets would continue to be upgraded to maintain their performance. In 2006, the Air Force issued a new request for proposals for an advanced refueling aircraft named RFP KC-X, the first step in a three-phase process to modernize the entire tanker fleet. By January 2007, the requirements were updated, and on February 29, 2008, the Department of Defense shocked many by announcing its choice of Northrop Grumman's KC-30, designated KC-45A by the Air Force, over Boeing's KC-767. The KC-45A, based on the Airbus A330 airframe from EADS, now Airbus's Defense and Space Division, represented an ambitious collaboration between European technology and American industrial capability. This marked a significant victory for Northrop Grumman and Airbus, a giant leap forward for the aerospace defense industry. However, the joy for Airbus and Northrop Grumman was short-lived. Just days after the contract announcement, Boeing launched an all-out counteroffensive aiming to convince the Air Force that the KC-45A was the wrong choice. The dispute played out not only in government offices, but also across media outlets and in the U.S. Congress. In the end, Boeing later succeeded in convincing the Department of Defense to let the manufacturer have the opportunity to compete in this race with its KC-767. And the result surprised everyone. The story of the KC-45A and KC-767 serves as a vivid testament to the fierce competition within the defense industry, where every decision influences billions of dollars and shapes the future of military capabilities. It also underscores that, don't be quick to judge the future of the one once considered the loser. But how did things go that day? Why did it happen that way, and was the winner really worthy? Stay tuned for the exciting parts below. But first off, thank you for sticking with us this far. This is an interesting battle, isn't it? However, it would mean the world to us if you could show your support by helping us reach 40k subscribers soon. Thank you so much for the motivation. We are truly honored to partner with the Air Force on their top priority project, the KC-45A Aerial Refueling Aircraft. The KC-45A project was led by Northrop Grumman in collaboration with EADS North America, General Electric Aviation, and several other American companies. The initial contract, valued at $1.5 billion, which is approximately $2.2 billion in 2024, was to deliver four aircraft for system design and development. This plan was expected to expand into a contract for 179 aircraft with a total value of $35 billion, which is approximately $51 billion in 2024. In case you didn't know, the first KC-45A, now known as the A330 MRTT, multi-role tanker transport, completed its maiden flight on September 25, 2007, and was slated to begin conversion into a refueling aircraft configuration. By early 2008, its aerial refueling boom system entered flight testing and achieved remarkable success in conducting numerous in-flight refueling operations, marking a significant milestone in military aviation technology. A 330 MRTT is the perfect blend of modernity and versatility. As the military version of the Airbus A330 commercial airliner, it is designed as a dual-function platform, serving as both an aerial refueling tanker and a cargo transport aircraft. Notably, the wing-mounted refueling pods, developed by Cobham, a leading British company, ensure precise and safe refueling capabilities. 
Furthermore, the aircraft's cargo hold was upgraded by Telaire, enabling it to efficiently transport both military pallets and standard civilian unit load devices, ULD. This exceptional versatility and optimization have made this tanker a standout choice for global military missions. With a fuel capacity of 245,000 pounds, 111,000 kilograms, stored in its wings and underfloor tanks, the A330 tanker excels not only in aerial refueling, but also in transport capability. Impressively, the underfloor tanks do not affect cargo capacity on the main deck or seating arrangements during strategic transport missions. With its standard fuel capacity, the aircraft can carry an additional 43,000 kilograms of cargo, a remarkable feat in military aviation. The wing structure of the A330 MRTT is inherited from the A340-200 and 304 engine series, with reinforced positions for the outer engines of the A340. This design minimizes modifications needed for the tanker to utilize these hardpoints for integrating wing-mounted refueling pods, delivering superior operational efficiency. Gary Irvin, then Vice President and President of Northrop Grumman's Integrated Systems Division, affirmed, The U.S. Air Force conducted a thorough and transparent competition to select their new aircraft, resulting in the choice of a solution that best meets both current and future requirements. The KC-45A aircraft, developed based on the A330 tanker, would be assembled at a dedicated facility in Mobile, Alabama, creating 25,000 jobs across 230 U.S. companies. This project not only represents a pinnacle of military technological advancement, but also provides significant economic benefits to the U.S. defense industry. But Boeing had an interesting attitude. Boeing was far from pleased when the lucrative KC-45 contract slipped from its grasp in favor of Northrop Grumman's offering, the KC-45, over Boeing's KC-767, later renamed the KC-46. The moment the decision was made, Boeing swiftly demanded a debriefing from U.S. Air Force officials. In a press release, Mark McGraw, vice president of the Boeing 767 tanker program, stated, we presented a highly competitive proposal specifically focusing on delivering refueling capability with low risk and the lowest total life cycle cost. McGraw stressed that Boeing strongly disagreed with the label of high risk, arguing that Northrop Grumman and E-Ads were two companies working together for the first time on a new aircraft. In response, Northrop Grumman launched its own campaign to defend the selection. Ronald Sugar, the CEO of Northrop Grumman, wrote an article titled The Best Tanker One for the LA Times, where he rejected the misinformation circulating in the media. Sugar firmly declared that Northrop Grumman had won the contract fairly, emphasizing that the project would create jobs and provide significant economic benefits for the United States. And then, this battle for the contract quickly turned into a fierce war of words, with each side vigorously defending their position. However, it was clear that the stakes were enormous, not just for the companies involved, but also for national security and the economy. And the outcome was, despite Boeing's protests, the U.S. Government Accountability Office thoroughly reviewed their complaint and concluded that the Air Force had made several significant errors that could have affected the outcome of the competition. In response, the bidding process was relaunched in 2009 with a new acquisition strategy that resulted in Boeing's victory in 2011 with its KC-767, thanks to a bid 1% lower than its competitors. You know, Boeing succeeded in overturning the contract, reclaiming the deal with its KC-767, which was later refined into the KC-46 Pegasus, a modern symbol of U.S. aerial strength. What about the A330 tanker? Initially, the first four units were slated for conversion from the A330 passenger version at EADS EFW in Dresden, Germany, before being modified by Northrop Grumman in the U.S. Airbus had also planned to assemble the aircraft in Mobile, Alabama, before their modifications. The victorious partnership of Northrop Grumman and EADS, the aircraft frame contractor, had envisioned investing approximately $600 million into a new assembly plant at the Brooklyn Complex in Mobile, Alabama. However, with EADS failing to secure the contract, the planned A330 assembly line in Alabama was never realized. Yet, on June 30th, 2012, EADS, later known as Airbus, announced the establishment of a new facility in Mobile, Alabama, dedicated to the production of Airbus A320 narrow-body aircraft. The facility officially began operations on September 14th, 2015, marking a significant milestone for Airbus in the United States. Ultimately, 
This battle for the KCX tanker contract stands as one of the most intense and fiercely contested procurement competitions in the history of U.S. defense. The stakes were immense, and the outcome reshaped the future of U.S. military aerial refueling for years to come. But was the victory worth it? KC-46 has not had warp certification, in-flight refueling pods on the wings, and can't implement the entire 100% mission unlimitedly. And of course, it can't replace all KC-135's missions. Currently, with the smaller Pegasus aircraft instead of the larger KC-45, the Pacific Area of Responsibility, AOR, may feel more restricted. Interestingly, the U.S. Air Force has labeled this tanker as a high-risk option while Boeing argues that this tanker is a low-risk choice. However, by 2025, it still hasn't reached full operational capability. Even though this tanker is cheaper, it needs to consider the ability when demanding to replace KC-135. Previously, the KC-767 won the bid due to being over 1% cheaper than its competitor. After all, no foreign-made aircraft are used by the Air Force for refueling. Was that the right decision? What do you think? One critical reason for reconsidering the contract was the operational compatibility of the KC-45. Unlike the KC-46, the KC-45 would not fit into the same hangars or parking spaces as the KC-46. This mismatch would have required costly modifications to air bases worldwide to accommodate the larger aircraft. In contrast, the Boeing tanker shares a similar ground footprint with the KC-135R, allowing it to seamlessly integrate into existing hangars and parking facilities used by its predecessor. Additionally, the Pegasus offers unique advantages for U.S. operations, excelling in scenarios where quick deployment from rough airstrips is crucial. Conversely, the MRTT shines in European-style operations where carrying heavy payloads over long distances to remote destinations is essential and well-maintained runways are standard. While the MRTT may outperform the Pegasus in some areas, there are contexts where it proves to be more versatile and operationally efficient. Which aircraft do you think is more suitable for replacement of KC-135? Why? Leave your thoughts below. Thank you for watching, and may all your journeys be safe and smooth.